today we are about to find out what the art of public speaking is. And we have our guest in the studio. He is Abraham Owosheni, a public speaker and a trainer. Good morning. Good, good, morning. good morning. Good morning. It's good great morning. to be here again. Thank, Thank you. you so much for coming. <laughs> yeah. All right. So the question is, how do you master the art of public speaking? Okay. Um, you know, just like you introduced, public speaking is, is a wide spectrum. But mm -hmm. I think one of the first foundations we need to set is that um, we all can engage the use of public speaking. Public speaking is a, to is a tool. So um, a salesperson can engage the use of public speaking. A marketer can engage the use of public speaking. A professional in a workplace can engage the use of public speaking. And a, a political leader can engage the use of public speaking. A teacher, everybody can engage the use of public speaking. It's just a tool. Mm. And so the question is, what do I want to use this tool for? All right. Right? So it's, uh, it's a tool and then it's an art. I call it an art and a science. Public speaking is an art and a science. Now, the, the art part is what is within you. You can't change the art. The art is myself, my personality, my aura, my, you know, my, my charisma. That's my, that's my, that's my art. Mm -hmm. But the science can be learned everywhere. The science talks about the principles. There are, there are a set of guidelines that should be followed as a public speaker. So there are things I should follow when I'm speaking in public. And the mm -hmm. art talks about your being yourself. You know, if you look at an array of various public speakers, you find that there's this uniqueness about each person. That talks about the art, right? But then you find again that they are following the same science. The science can be learned by anybody, whether you are an introvert, extrovert, anybody can learn the science. Blended with your arts, you'll be an amazing public speaker. Mm. Okay, so, yeah. so we're about to learn the science. Yeah, what yeah, are yeah. The we're about to learn science. And guidelines that would help you as a public speaker. Okay, now um, th there's a whole lot, but you see, the, the beginning point is this: I, I found that that you know, um, words are the carriers of thoughts. Words. And so most times, it's not necessarily about um, how to say what you want to say, but what you want to say in itself. Mm. Now, that's, that's very interesting. Yeah, I yeah, need to is. break it down. Now, because the idea is that, you know, when, you, when, you, when, you, when someone appears to speak somewhere, either you could even be, let's even break it down. You could even just be hosting a meeting in your workplace, you know, and then, or you just, just a staff meeting, or it's just you're going for a sales call, or it's just anything. It's not necessarily when you're standing on a stage. No, everybody engages the use of speaking. So it's, it's not just about how to say what to say, but knowing what to what say exactly. in itself. Oh. And what to say is a combination of words, right? So words make up you know, sentences, and sentences in turn makes up um, a speech. And so as a public speaker or as any, any professional engaging the use of public speaking, I appear and you know, all about what I want to say is about the words I want to use, the sentences I want to use. So in other words, people are, there's a paucity of words that denies people from speaking well in public. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily even how to speak. Yes, I, I know there's a percentage of how to speak, what to speak, but there is a larger percentage of what to say. say. Now, so the first thing I, you know, the first thing I do is that I get to coach other people and train other people on the art of speaking. And you know, when we go through the course mode, one of the first things we, we try, try to establish is what is your message? Okay. What do you want to say? You know, so we talk about... Um, um, you know, clarifying your message. So, for example, you could be a speaker and most your, your subject matter area is maybe on health and wellness. You could be a speaker and your area is on um, maybe um, genetics or, you know, recreation or anything or real estate. You can speak from any area of knowledge. You can speak just from any area of knowledge. So, but you need to first clarify that message you know, build a niche around that area of your message, and then you build on it. You, you, so you find that as, you, as you've clarified your message, over time, you are, you are, you are so you know, established in that field, and you don't lack what to say. You don't lack words. You are already a master in, um, you've mastered your art. That yeah. is, as I've gotten from what you said earlier, it is an art, and it's okay. a science. You've blended yeah, your blended. art and your science, but I haven't. I, I want to be a great speaker. Yeah. I want to be able to stand in front of people and, you know, give my message, send that message okay. across. But now I need the tips. 
to become a great public speaker because <laughs> the first thing that comes to my mind is fear. Yeah. I am afraid. Okay. I see a lot of people all around me and I'm like, oh no, I cannot face this. People now. So tell okay. me, what are the tips that I need to use to become a great public speaker? But sorry to come in, before <laughs> you know the tips, okay. I really want to know, is public speaking tool for everyone? Is mm. it really for everyone? Okay, yeah, okay. So let me start from, you know, you know what you asked. Now, some people use public speaking actively, some other use it passively. Mm. Mm. But everybody can use it. So, for example, currently you are engaging the use of public speaking, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, when I give various invitations and trainings, I'm engaging it actively. Most times, when you see a person on a stage, is engaging the use of public speaking actively, right? So, but you can engage it. Perhaps you're just um, you're in an interview panel. You're also engaging the use of public speaking, either as an interviewer or the interviewee, right? right. And so everybody gets to engage the use of public speaking on the, either of the divide, either actively or passively. That is clear, right? Now, um, beginning to, you know, the starting point to, you know, of managing and blending the other sign is this, mm. understand who you are, right? And, and uh, to, be, to be sincere, actually, there, there is no set of 10 rules to speak in. Okay. I, I can be sincere with you, right? And, you know, the, the idea is that master some set of principles and show up show up over time, you get better at the craft, right? And so, first understand your personality. So for example, I'm, I'm, yes, I'm a blend of a, of a choleric person and a, and a, and a sanguine person. Ooh. More, more of actually choleric and phleg, right? Mm. Not even more of sanguine. So in other words, I'm not necessarily you know, an extrovert or an outgoing person, right? And so I need to understand myself. As, the, as much as I'd like to be myself, I am myself in, yeah. in itself. And <laughs> I'd like to, you know, stand in front of people and give my message. Yeah. But I'm afraid. Okay. I am. I'm shaky. I'm, I'm, I'm trying as much as possible to focus, but I'm sweaty. I cannot control it. But what exactly can I do? Okay, let, let me merge that with something. You know, a number of persons talk about stage fright, right? Yes. Um, together with that, that fear. And you see... It's, it's a scientific and a psychological thing. Mm. If I appear before, before an audience that I've seen before or I've spoken bef you know, to over time, there is no, there is no G3, there's no, there no stage fright. If I appear before an audience today, perhaps a new audience, that, you know, in the first two minutes, I could have some bit of you know, increased ad beats. Okay. Even till today. Right? Oh, but I've, but till I've, today. But I've mastered, the, I've mastered the science. And the science is, the, the secret to this is that when you appear before, you know, a set of people you don't necessarily know before, you could feel that way. It's the, how the body is wired. But then your focus should be away from that increased heartbeat or fright. Your focus should be on the message. Okay. You see, that's why I, you know, I, I shared about clarifying the message yes, for. Yes, so yes. this is what I do. So I get somewhere, maybe it's a new audience I've not spoken to before, and then I, you know, I get set, and then I, I, you know, I start up with an opening remarks or whatever I want to do to speaking. So whether I, my heart is beating for the first, first 60 seconds or not, I just get on speaking. And after a while, you, you, you were actually have forgotten when that stopped and normalized because that's just, the, that's just the, the makeup of the body in that guy's. And the fact that I appear before an audience I get to see virtually weekly, there's something special. We laugh when we see you know, one another. And then we just, that's, that's how it works. And so the principle again in that sense is overlook the fright, overlook the fear, focus on the message. Focus on the message. And you know, a, a tip that can help with that is you could, you could just um, have, a form, have a strong opening. And I, you see, as we go on this session, I don't want us to focus on those who engage the use of speaking actively alone. All right. So that we engage on everybody actively and passively. Passive. Okay. But the point is, I could, just be, I could just be having a meeting with five people. Public speaking means I'm having a meeting with five people or more, whether it's 550, 500, 5,000, that's it. And so when I'm having a meeting with five people, the same energy, the same principles I will engage as I'm engaging now is the same principle I will engage anywhere. Mm. And so when I start speaking with them, I could just have an opening remark. It could just be, um, it could even be a little form of welfare, saying, oh, good morning, everybody. How are you doing this morning? As simple as that is. Or I could even start by sharing a story. Or I could just start by um, maybe just saying a, you know, a striking um, thought or a quote. Mm. There are various opening remarks that could be used to start up a presentation. 
Now, do we have ethics that are set in stone for public, public speaking that every public speaker all over the world must follow? Okay. Yes, we do. We do. And, and, and then, you know, if you look at every profession, what the difference between every profession is that they, there's this set of ethics that they follow. They call, mm -hmm. Some call them code of conduct. Yes. yes. So we have a code of conduct as well as a public speaker. And one of them is this. Um, be it a passive or an active form of engagement or presentation, you get to see how you can... Um, one of them is protocol. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So you appear somewhere to speak. You know, I, I think I gave an example the other time, and then I could just have an opening remark by saying, oh, good morning, everybody. That's a simple act of courtesy, simply greeting the audience, as simple as that could be. I didn't just come in and start blabbing with all of my oh, experience and principles, except I'm trying to form another entrance, another opening remark using that. Okay. But yeah, but so... And you even get some form of um, very corporate, you know, uh, platforms to speak, and it's expected of a public speaker to, you know, follow some set of protocol. Although some persons over time get to misuse that, and you know, that derails them from the message. So the idea is that you could just recognize the protocol. For example, you could recognize the organizers of an event you 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 are in, or oh, say something just to show that you appreciate people you're speaking with for their time. Mm -hmm. I would like to appreciate your time for being here today. That's courtesy. Now, let's go away from protocol. Another sort of principle or ethics you could follow is what we call, um, what we call it's, it deals with the use of the speaking tools. Speaking itself is a tool, but you know, again, when you're speaking, you know, especially when you want to amplify your voice, you have some you know, gadgets and devices you use. For example, you're using the mic, one of the most notable, you know, uh, tools for speaking. For speaking. A, microphone. Oh. a microphone. So whether it's an handheld microphone or a lavella microphone or hands free, whatever kind of microphone, there's a way you should use it. And then I, I don't get somewhere to speak and I'm just eating the mic to test it, you know, and, and all of that. <laughs> oh, um, so it's, it's advisable that the mic is about two inches uh, um, below, your mouth. below your mouth. So you're not breathing in too much air into it. Directly. Now, mm -hmm. uh, there's a caveat to that. It depends on mics differs, so it depends on the quality and the. So some you could even be this way and it's fine. Some so depending on that, that also works too. And so um, some have said you the mic with your right and your left hand. I don't think there's any casting stone principle to that. You can hold it in either hands, and you could also you know, alternate it, depending on the gestures you want to make. We'll come to that mm -hmm. shortly. So, but the idea is that uh, the mic is to amplify your voice. So if people can't hear you and you're still using the mic, it's making no sense. Mm. Gestures, um, that's, we call it delivery dynamics. All right. That's, um, I think in the, in, the, in the school of public speaking, that could take about maybe 50%. Mm. You know why I said so? In delivery dynamics, you have about two parts to it. You have the verbal, the verbal uh, dynamics and the non-verbal. Non-verbal, yeah. Okay. And both of them are, you know, very important. Now, the idea is that verbal talks about your voice, your tonation, your words, Right? Yes, I know we may not necessarily go in depth to talk, talking about, um, you know, elocution and all of that. Oh, yeah. And if you, you know, a public speaker, you want to very, be a very good public speaker that's um, Pan-African, global, you could want to go into and get some very important skill on that regard. Such that whether you're speaking in Nigeria or anywhere, people understand you when you say any word. It's mm -hmm. the right way to say the word. So I'm not going to say I'm the best in, you know, that, but the point is, Keeping a tab on improving yourself, especially with the use of words. So now, but apart from that, apart from the kind of words or grammar, now a key part also is the tonality. Okay. Now, have you been in some sessions and then um, you just sit at somewhere <laughs> and then the session is boring? Mm. Yes, I, I would. Say <laughs> <laughs> I would say yes to that. You know, I, actually. When, when, I, when I look at all of these things, I actually, and I'm glad on this kind of platform that, you know, I impact is giving, because people need this education. Mm -hmm. you, you, don't need, you don't need a degree in this to improve your skill in speaking. Mm -hmm. So the, the point is this. Not every word will be on the same level of pitch. When I want to make a stress on some words, I increase my pitch. When I want to make a point of emphasis, I increase my pitch. So if I'm saying if I'm saying something, very good morning to you. I want you to say very good morning to you. Tonality. Hmm. So I look at every sentence I have in my speech, 
and there are some words that will require a higher pitch and some might come down. And some again, to repeat them as a form of emphasis, I increase the pitch again. Mm. That's verbal dynamics, tonality. And so you find that if someone is just speaking and is just at the same level, this person is speaking like he's, he or she is sick, then you know that is not being conveyed well. Mm. And so the idea is that speaking, speaking, speaking demands energy. And by energy, I don't mean you are gyrating. I only mean you are giving the right tonality to every of your words. Do you like the video you just watched? Then you should click on the like button and move over to click on the subscribe button. Also, you should click on the bell to get notified anytime we drop amazing episodes of Tea or Coffee for you. Adios.